Hello, my friends. Today, Shalin continues from Russian territory towards the border towns of Chernihiv, Sumy, and Kharkov regions. Moreover, strikes with guided bombs toward the Kharkov region are being observed again. Unfortunately, explosions in Kharkov persist. But periodic strikes are also reported near Belgorod. Uh, meanwhile, Shoigu is trying to monitor the operations of factories and is dissatisfied with the insufficient staffing levels there. As it appears, the Kremlin is urgently trying to increase arms production. Similarly, uh, many remember how Lithuania recently summoned the Belarusian ambassador over Lukashenko's statement. So it seems they are trying to demonstrate through information that they can do something. So just listen to what he's saying. Ну, чтобы мы упрощенно к этому не относились, мы должны точно знать, чего они хотят. А сколько у нас все время они вякают про эти Сувальский коридор, сколько тут километров до России, до Калининградской области от наших границ. Ну вот, да, да, 42 вот. километра. Это на прямую если, сюда. Если по прямую, да. а если по границе, то около 90. Практически ничего. Зря они себя так ведут. Но в данный момент тебе придется противостоять Балтийским республикам и, на... и часть Польши ты прихватываешь. Там небольшую. Северную часть, да? Северо... да. Северо-восточную. Спланировано, ты уверен, что это по фронту эта территория, ты ее удержишь своими э, войсками. Существуют документы военного планирования, все действия спланированы. Вопросы боевой готовности отрабатываются, личный состав готовится, в том числе то, что предусмотрено, поставлено вашими указаниями, сейчас уже исполняется распоряжением министра обороны в рамках подготовки укрепрайонов. Мы не просто выходим в районы проведения полевого выхода и в районы проведения учений, мы в том числе, вот как сейчас, в реальные районы, чтобы личный состав, офицеры знали, Местность, знали дороги, знали где, как, что, чтобы целесообразно на местности могли принимать решения и были готовы непосредственно к реальным действиям. It's evident. They are openly intimidating NATO countries. Uh, but everyone understands well that the Belarusian army with approximately 50,000 troops cannot stand up uh, to NATO countries. Uh, by the way, Lukashenko previously claimed that their army has increased to 75,000 personnel. Uh, and all this uh, supposedly due to war preparations. Uh, but with Soviet-era equipment, they won't get far. So clearly, even if any moves start, they won't manage without the Russian army. So, but what is it really? A warning or just intimidation? We'll find out soon. So what do you think about this? Uh, can Lukashenko dare to take such a step under Putin's pressure? So share your thoughts in the comments. Now, let's move on to the situation on the front line, starting with the Bakhmut direction. Unfortunately, the occupiers have resumed movement towards Chasiv Yar. And again, just to dispel any doubts, I'll show the official statement from the general staff that the Ukrainian armed forces repelled another series of attacks in the area of Chasiv Yar. In the Bakhmut direction, our soldiers repelled four attacks in the areas of the settlements of Chasiv Yar, Ivanivsk, Klishchivka of the Donetsk Oblast, where the enemy, with the support of aviation, tried to improve the tactical position. More than 10 settlements, including Bodanivka, Chase of Yar, Klishchivka, Dilyivka of the Donetsk Oblast, came under artillery in mortar fire. As it seems, the attacks are ongoing reaching Chase of Yar. However, the Ukrainian armed forces are holding their positions and the front line remains unchanged for the day. Additionally, the high number of shelling continues. 
and the situation remains challenging. In the Avdivka direction, the Russians also continue to actively advance towards the settlement of Umansk. Over the day, the Ukrainian armed forces repelled all attacks and the front line remains unchanged. Moreover, the battles for Berestov persist and further south there are fights for Paramaisky and Nevis. Overall, there have been 16 attacks recorded in the Avdivka direction in a day, indicating significant activity. So Shalin also continues in large numbers. And today, incorrect information from foreign media about the Avdivka direction is circulating. So let's start by showing the statement. Russia remains to capture two villages near Avdiivka to enter the operational space, build. Analyst This is how Build Open Data analyst Julian Rob commented on the situation west of Avdiivka. Initially, the armed forces of Ukraine held the line there along the line Berdikai, Semyonovka, Orlovka, Tonenkoy. There are ponds and small rivers that are convenient to defend. To date, the armed forces of the Russian Federation have broken through this line everywhere, except for Berdikai and Semyonovka. There are stubborn battles for them, but they are already partially controlled by Russia. Active resistance is provided by the 47th Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Everything here is correct. But there is no mention of any breakthroughs to operational spaces, no can there be. It feels like these experts last looked at a map six months ago. So the thing is, uh, as you all know, there is construction underway for the defensive line. Uh, besides, there were small defensive lines around these villages before. Yes, the Russians breached them. But beyond Kurahova to Karlivka and further north, there is a new powerful defensive line under construction just like before. So those small defensive lines the Russians breached don't lead them to operational spaces because a powerful defense lies ahead. In the Marinka direction, the occupies continue to storm Krasnohorivka, Novomikhailivka and fights have resumed in the village of Pabeda. Here, the occupies are trying to expand their controlled territory and then uh, there have been 30 attacks in this direction in a day. Although the front line remains unchanged, the Ukrainian forces report a catastrophic shortage of weapons and ammunition to eliminate the Russians in this area. In the Marienka direction, the Russians feel very free. 2.5 kilometers from the front, south of Novomikhailivka, Russian mortars are not even camouflaging their positions, in the village of Salik, without armor in slippers at all, they are resting and calmly digging in. According to the interceptions, they say that our artillery does not finish off there. The command of the brigade stationed there needs to rectify the situation and complete their resort. Overall, we are waiting to see how events unfold, but the situation remains difficult on this front. In the area of Vuhledar, everything remains unchanged. The occupies continue their attempts to advance towards Vodyana and assault Staromayorsk. Shalin is conducted both by artillery and aviation. However, the Ukrainian forces maintain their defense and the front line remains unchanged. In the Zaporizhia direction, assaults on Robotina are once again being reported today. However, near Verbove, the Ukrainian armed forces repelled all attacks and the front line remains unchanged. Shalin in this area also continues, uh, but it seems that Russian ones failed. So Ukrainian forces have made significant progress in their counteroffensive here, but Russian attacks haven't ceased. So. We are waiting to see how events will unfold further. In the Kherson direction, occupies continue shelling the right bank and occasionally launch attacks on Krynke. 
Uh, and the archivists complain that under General Tupolinsky's uh, command for the past five months, they have suffered significant personal losses and failed to dislodge the Ukrainian forces from the left bank. Today is exactly five months since the beginning of the command of General Teplinsky of the Dnipro. Civil Army and today there will be no our daily summary. Today we commemorate all our soldiers who died in the Dnipro military command during the five months of Colonel General Teplinsky's command. There are many fallen and there will be even more as long as Teplinsky commands the Dnipro main army. In the Luhansk direction. Uh, this situation is slightly calmer than in other directions. So, in the area of Siversk, the occupies attempted to break through to Bilohorivka, uh, but the efforts were unsuccessful, and the front line remains unchanged. Uh, similarly, in the direction of Krimina, the situation remains the same. The occupies continue their attacks in the area of Terni, conducting a significant number of shelling, but without achieving any success, and the front line remains unchanged. Uh, in the Svatove and Kupiansk areas, the situation has slightly quieted down. Ukrainian forces on the ground confirm that the occupiers have reduced their activity and appear to be mobilizing new reserves for possible future attacks. But for now, it can be said that they haven't achieved any success, and the capture of Kupians has failed. And that's all for me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Uh, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.